Well, welcome everybody and aloha. My name is Paul Fletcher and this is The Healing Source. I'm excited this week as well because we are now halfway into the 10 Da series. This is now week number five of the 10 Da qualities. Each and every week I have been spending a half hour to explain each one of these very important qualities. And I take no credit for them. They were originally received by Dr. and Master Jigong Sha. And when he received these 10 qualities, he also wrote phrases for them and he actualizes them. Uh, one of the things that he's taught his students is, you know, <laughs> words are nothing. If you, if you speak of love, then be love. If you speak of humility, then be humility. And that's the subject of today's Ten Da. Today is Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. So for those of you that uh, might be stumbling across this podcast for the first time, are not familiar with any of these, do like and subscribe. And go back and listen to uh, maybe the first few that I did, which explains all about the Tao and Tao healing. And then in this series, the first four that you have missed is Da I, the greatest love, Da Quan Shu, the greatest forgiveness, Da Tsube, the greatest compassion, and uh, Da Guang Ming, the greatest light. Today, of course, is Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. Now, this da, 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 what is this? Why do we do this? Well, because my teacher, Dr. and Master Shaw, uh, is Mandarin Chinese. That's his native tongue. And so when he receives these, these messages in his, the books, he actually receives them in his native tongue. And so then we translate it into English. Okay? Gives you a little bit of a background. So I can share with you from my own personal experience that this particular quality is one that I needed a significant amount of assistance with. And I find that as I have moved through my humility blockages, which is basically a lot of ego, that there is a profound amount of ego in all humanity. Also, one of the things that I've been able to learn over the last 10 or so years um, since these 10 da have been brought to humanity is the different ways that it shows up in our life and in the lives of all those around us and how it creates such problems for humanity. Okay, so these are some of the subjects that we'll be touching on today. So what is Da He She, the greatest humility? It is a phrase that represents a state of being that acknowledges you have been created by a source. Why is that important to understand? Because most of us forget that 99% of the day. We might wake up and offer gratitude to the source and maybe once or twice throughout the day say thank you to the source. But an individual who is truly humble realizes that without the source, they would not be here. Without the source, they would not have breath. They would not have animated life in this physical bag of bones. Because the moment we die in this physical third dimensional experience our soul returns to the source which means we are not this personality i am not this guy named paul you are not whomever you are whatever name has been given you this time around you are a moment in time having an experience on behalf of your soul but when that moment is done your soul returns and goes back to the source. And what happens is when we are here in this experience, we forget this most important and we lose humility. 
in the losing of humility, in the gaining of, uh, of, of ego, we create separation. Separation from what? From source. You've heard the word enlightenment. What is enlightenment? <laughs> if I was truly enlightened, I would probably have a far better answer for you. <clears throat> but one aspect of enlightenment is 100% humility, wherein that soul knows that absolutely nothing can occur if they are not fully aligned with the source. That is levels and layers of separation. Separation from source occurs upon birth. When our mom and our dad are our source, our God, they're the ones that provide for us. We're 100% dependent upon them. We can't do anything without them. We can't, we can't go poop. We can't eat. Nothing. We're completely dependent upon those parents. They become our source. And we we start receiving information by their thoughts, their words, their actions. And we create our personalities very early on. These personalities, if we are uh, taught well by the parents, then the child can be taught humility. They can be taught the source is your creator, not mom and not daddy. We bow down to the source. We offer gratitude to the source. We say thank you. We realize nothing can happen without the source. If those kinds of teachings are taught to the child early on, then they have a good foundation of humility. It is those in the world today that hurt, harm, uh, extreme violence, war, uh, um, taking advantage of people financially, they are so distant from the source, meaning they have lost entirely their humility. They fail to realize what birthed them. And in that failure, they have went to depending upon their cells, depending upon their mind, separate from the heart, which is the communication vehicle of the source. The source communicates through our heart chakra, heart center, through our emotions and through our spiritual channels. But when we have a lack of humility, we, it translates to a lack of connection to source, a lack of alignment, recognition of the one that birthed us. And I don't mean your mother. There is, of course, the standard definition of the opposite of humility, which is ego. And these are physical world playing out of the degree of separation from the source. How far are we from alignment is dependent upon how much is the source within your predominant thoughts. If you truly were aligned to the source, there would be zero second guessing. Zero. You would say, um, you know, dear source, dear my creator, this happened and I need this to happen instead. Um, if it's the highest and the best, because otherwise A, B, and C will be the result. And I don't really want that. So could you make, can you fix that? Can you resolve that for me? If that's what's meant to happen. If it's not, then obviously the highest and best will be the outcome. And you just let it go. And, you know, in a day or two, it's just resolved. That means you ask and it was delivered. And it happens and it happens a lot. Everybody watching, it's happened to. Everybody listening, this has happened to before. You've asked for something and it was delivered. And if you pay attention, it's because you had no attachment to the outcome. It's because you basically trusted. It's because you were in alignment in that request. And it, it happened. It wasn't a big deal. You know, some of the manifestation wisdoms out there says it's, it's just as easy for the source to manifest a castle as a button. There's zero difference. 
million dollars or a button. Same, same, no different. What separates it is our, our own consciousness, our lack of humility, our lack of knowings, trusting, and alignment. So the more we have went into self-protection, woe is me, poor me, why me? You notice something on the end of those three sentences? Dr. Master Shah says, me, 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 opposite of enlightenment. But it's not like you and I go around saying, take care of me, me, I'm important, I'm a queen. He doesn't mean that. He means it's a lack of humility. It's not about me, me, me. It's not about my drama, my story, my job, my coworker, my um, health condition. That's all me, me, me. That's not I am one with source. Source is one with me. That was the fourth of the ten das, the greatest light. Remember that? So when we practice humility, which is another saying, another way of saying, when we acknowledge the source is always with us and can do anything, can resolve anything. When we operate throughout the day, catching ourselves in a woe is me kind of a drama, in whatever way it shows up, and for a lot of us, it's very subtle, got to catch it. We can at that moment recognize, wow, this can go very, very deep. The ego is the mechanism that is formed as your childhood, as you grow. Mom and dad teach you, the teachers teach you, the, the school systems teach you, the religious systems teach you, um, brothers and sisters, people that you watch, the peers, and all of those they might have been abusive. They might have been wonderful. But all of those set of exterior conditions contributed to you forming your uh, personality. And that personality could have a lot of defensive mechanisms because uh, most of us, we are coming in with our heart fully open, right? We're, we're babes in the woods, coming with a heart fully open. And then they might have a belligerent or aggressive parent uh, uh, that doesn't know how to express themselves emotionally with love, respect, and forgiveness. We might witness violence, uh, but they don't hurt us, but we witness it when they hurt another parent. So we have these protection mechanisms, most of us do, that we adopt from early on. We might take things personally when somebody says, you know, you're overweight, or, or you're too tall, or you're too short, or you're too pretty, or you're too fat, or you're too skinny, or you're too whatever. Right. So we build up protection mechanisms around that because it hurts our heart. But all of these are basically personality um, attachments, personality ego pieces that we've accepted. And, and it's built the way we bring ourselves to the world. It's built the way we we listen. Uh, when we hear anything outside of us, we filter it through through that ego. We filter it through those series of, of thoughts that we've collected. We filter it through our protection mechanisms and we react and respond accordingly. Okay. Sometimes we react and respond with anger because we're hurt because our protection mechanisms say, I don't like to be hurt. And then we uh, entangle ourselves quantumly with another by lashing out in anger. These are all forms of, of a lack of humility. The ancient wisdom uh, would say, turn the other cheek. What's a higher level of understanding that? A higher level is not taking anything personally because someone that is in alignment with source recognizes that every one of us is one with source as well. Uh, they're just a little farther away from source and the, and the person that's able to turn the other cheek not take it personally, it's a little bit closer to source. And that's not a judgment either. They're just not taking it personally because they realize this person's in a great deal of pain or an emotional pain or they wouldn't be lashing out. So they don't take it personally. They turn the other cheek. They have more humility. So these are all different ways we can identify within our lives 
uh, how can we improve? Uh, most of you watching here today and some of you listening on podcast <clears throat> know that we want to idealize these 10 qualities into our life, but we're not quite sure how to implement them. So when I share this wisdom, you know, I'm doing it in flow. You know, before I come in, I, I, I ask him and give me the message. What do you want to share? I'll borrow my mouth. So this is what's coming through. And so it's important to realize that we don't have egos purposefully. We, we have this ego and this personality as a side effect, as a result of what we grew up with. You know, we might have had parents or peers or teachers or someone that was abusive. And that could be part of our um, experience. Remember, if you believe in more than one life, it's possible that uh, in a previous time, we might have been that abusive one, and now we're receiving it. That lined up to help create your, quote, ego, so to speak. But the one that's moving towards awakening consciousness and enlightenment doesn't take it personally. They see that there could have been something that led to that person being abusive to you. They don't take it personally. They unwind the protection mechanisms that block the heart. We have so many problems in humanity today because everyone's hearts have variations of being closed. And the reasons of so many variations of being closed is because all the lifetimes of information catching up to them, creating conditions in which there's anger, abuse, resentment, and all these different emotions, people are far, far, far from source. They're into me, my story, my problem, blah, 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 blah. Let's, you know, let's hurt this person. Let's, let's take their car. Let's, let's do these unpleasant things because no one else is going to take care of me. All forms of a lack of humility. Now, it's equally true that when you and I and anyone else that hears this, starts applying it and starts not taking things personally and starts being that humble alignment with source, our life will naturally move into alignment. Things will harmonize. It'll be much easier to forgive and to love. It'll be much easier to receive insights because your heart chakra will be cluttered with all of this ego-based stuff that you might have accepted because of our lack of awakening. And as we become that more heart-centered person, our field affects everybody else around us. The greatest teacher is the one that actualizes what they are talking about, not the one that talks the best. That's why I love my teacher, Master Shah, because he's a representative of these ten das. He is a very pure representation of those ten qualities. So... If you want to make change in this world, start with yourself. Realize how far are you from the ultimate uh, uh, humility, which is you know, basically an enlightened soul, and move towards that by being conscientious. There's other ways in which Master Shah has assisted us, and he's brought to us these Tenda calligraphies. I have pulled up. Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. This source calligraphy is one of my favorites. And when we practice with these calligraphies, what in essence we're doing is we're allowing the field and the vibration within to come to us and wash away these um, acknowledged or accepted patterns growing up in the environment we did the ego, that all of that was formed because of our environment. And if we do not make adjustments to it, then it contributes to more negativity because we, we lash out, we react out from this me, me, me protectionistic space. So we're going to trace this calligraphy and we're going to connect to it at the soul level and ask it to transform some of those things so that we can uh, happily, joyfully, and with consciousness take nothing personally uh, realizing that we can bring forth into our life all that we want and desire just by aligning to the source more and more. So repeat after me. Uh, dear the soul of this source calligraphy, 
of Da He She, the greatest, excuse me, Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. I'm so grateful for your portal of love and light and all the, the, the frequencies and vibrations that you can offer. As I trace, could you please bless me to release uh, any protection mechanisms, any mindsets, attitudes, beliefs that I have adopted that separate me from my source creator? Bless me to have humility to realize that I would not be here without my source on a consistent moment-to-moment -moment basis so that I can bring forth much higher uh, love, light, and creation and manifestation in my life, move away from a me, 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 and move towards the alignment with my source. As appropriate, I'm deeply grateful. Thank you. And so now let us trace this beautiful source calligraphy. For those that are listening on podcast, I will trace on your behalf. So uh, for those on podcast, close your eyes to receive, unless, of course, you're driving and you'll receive. Anyway, and visualize light coming into your heart center and, and even see yourself emerging with the source. Let us begin. We'll chant the mantra of Daha She, and then I'll also read you the lines of the phrases associated with it. Daha She, Daha She, Daha She. Da she Da she Da she Da she Greatest humility Greatest humility, greatest humility, greatest humility, greatest humility, greatest humility. Greatest humility, greatest humility. Da hu she, da hu she, da hu she, da hu. Now I will chant the mantra from the uh, the five lines from the mantra that Dr. Master Shah received when he received these ten da qualities. Wu Da Chen Bei, the fifth ten da quality is the greatest humility. Ro Ro Bu Jung, be soft, gentle. And weak, do not fight, strive, or argue. Chi Shu Jing Jin, forge ahead vigorously in every aspect of life. Die Wang Zhang, fall infinitely deep. Oh, excuse me, Shi Chen Bei, lose humility. Shi Chen Bei, lose humility. Dia Wan Zhang, fall infinitely deep. So now I'll just read you the English. Continue to trace. I'm continuing to serve all those that are not able to see the calligraphy. So the fifth quality is the greatest humility. Be soft, gentle, and weak. Do not fight. Do not strive or argue. Forge ahead vigorously in every aspect of life. If you lose humility, you could fall infinitely deep. What's another way of saying that? When you lose humility, what is losing humility? That means being far away from source, me, me, me. You could fall infinitely deep into your own problems and find it very hard to get out of them because you fail to recognize 
that the source has always been there with you and in you, just like was taught in Dagwang Ming, the greatest light. I am within Tao, Tao is within me. But those who have no humility, Da Chen Bei, they can be have a great fall, great distance from the source. It can take a long time to remember their original nature. So now I will chant this mantra. Wu Da Chen Bei Ro 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 Let me see. This is a, a little bit off, so I have to get it right. Ro Ro Bu Jung Chu Shu Chu Jing Jin Shu Chen Bei Diawanjang. Well, I didn't do that one right, but we'll get it. Take it once or twice. Wu da chen bei ro ro bu jung shi chu jing jin shi chen bei diawanjang. There we go. Wu da chen bei. Ro ro bu jung shi chu jing jin shi chen bei die wang jung. So come to the end of this source calligraphy, offering our gratitude to the source and to all the love and light frequency within this source calligraphy that is assisting us to transform the distance that we may have unwittingly allowed between us and the source. We offer our deepest gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed this information today. Uh, in conclusion, Use every opportunity and every moment to catch yourself when you are complaining about your life, your health, your wellness, your, uh, your anything. And realize that is an aspect to, to guide you. I am separate from source right now. When I am whining, complaining, and, 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 and me, 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 that means that I am not allowing my source creator to assist me. Source is always within me. It's like the fish holding his breath underwater. If he just breathed and the source is within, he's within the source, and it's endless breath. But we hold our breath all the time in life, trying to think we have to do it all by ourselves. And by allowing, by being gentle, by being kind, by allowing the source in, to provide for us, it will. It's us getting out of our own way. That is the greatest humility, okay? So I want to thank you all for coming. I'm so grateful. I will see you here next week when we do the sixth of these 10 Da qualities, Da He She, the greatest harmony. So until then, I'll see you soon. Have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.